Hi everyone, welcome back to Almost Inevitable Tutorials. My name is still PK and in this video we're going to make ACF repeater fields into an accordion in Breakdance. Currently the Breakdance accordion element doesn't take dynamic fields. This can change in the future but at the moment that's not the case. Also to preface this, uh, Destiny Elements has an accordion element that allows the usage of ACF repeater fields so that's great. If you already have Destiny Elements, you won't need this tutorial, and I don't want to make, take anything away from the amazing work they've done. But if you're looking for just this one feature, or if you want to learn how to do it yourself, this is how you can do it. One more thing, this is not a custom element that was built in the Breakdance Element Studio. This is just an on-page, straightforward way of doing it. My usual approach to solving problems comes from an agency perspective. When you're working with multiple clients, all with their own timelines, you have to be able to deliver on deadline. So writing or implementing reliable code is necessary because you don't have time to wait for the developers to add your specific feature. So that's where I'm coming from. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, uh, here we are. Uh, this is a sample that I've built and you can see that it works like an accordion right cool um, like I said destiny elements has this accordion uh, element so if you already have a subscription to them uh, that would be great uh, then you won't need this right so anyways okay I'm not affiliated by any chance or anything so oh well cameras over here and we're gonna learn how to build it and I'm gonna I've already built it and I already have all the code ready for you so I have all this code ready for you so we're just you're just gonna be copy pasting from the link down below and I'm gonna show you how to put everything together with the right classes in there just so uh, you can get this to work exactly the same okay um, first of all we're gonna set up an ACF field group now I've already set it up here so I'm gonna walk you through how I did it and in the meantime it's best that you already have an FAQ page that the repeater field is gonna go into so here I have the FAQ repeater and if, once I open this up you'll see that it's a repeater field it's titled like that make sure the field name is already there is all, all also there it's always there uh, because if you don't have that it won't save properly okay uh, FAQ title content should be fine title is just a text field and the content is a WYSIWYG editor just in case people want to add more uh, content to it like links and stuff like that in there so um, this this helps and they won't have to write HTML directly okay I'm using a block because it gives you full-on uh, feel uh, fields and stacked in a single column as opposed to having them side by side you could have them side by side you if you want to do that you can use a table field um, and stuff like that but this is what we have for now now the reason why I said you need to set up a page first is because here you're gonna assign that to that page so here you pick page and you go find that FAQ page that you just set up okay uh, if you didn't if you don't have that FAQ page set up save it and then just come back and then reassign it and it should be fine so here we have that FAQ page set up uh, and if you go to the page edit page then you will see this right so here it is um, all open up opened up in its full glory right so we have a few fields here that'll work uh, now we need to set up a repeater field for uh, a global block for the repeater field to use and show inside the repeater okay so we're gonna go to breakdance and global blocks I've already set up this global block and I'm gonna minimize the amount of styling that I've done that you can do to this um, feel free to style any it any way you want but it's best that I guess later I'll show you the structure of how things are and uh, the the styling that you can do to it um, so if we open this so here we are inside the global block and we have two divs uh, they're all going to be inside the repeater field so directly inside the repeater field yeah directly inside the repeater post div there's going to be two divs like this uh, the first div here is what is going to be clickable later on and we'll have the title 
and the chevron that opens and closes. So we're going to add that by adding it inside the div. Now I've added a color here. Um, you can actually change the color when it's clicked on because the JavaScript that I'm going to be using uh, adds an extra class to the toggle. So you can actually style it if you want to. There's a background color and it has uh, padding. I added some padding just so the text won't sit right flush to the edges there. And as for the border, I added a little um, border radius just so it looks a little round there. Doesn't really matter. It's just just looks like what normal uh, toggles would look like. So this div is with the layout new layout engine. It works even better. Uh, it's on uh, flex row and there's space in between for the alignments and vertically it is uh, centered so it doesn't get lopsided the the chevron uh, the chevron the heading is currently at an h3 and it's taking uh, the faq title that we just set up in acf so you'll see repeater field and faq title um, it can be whatever heading you want so it doesn't really matter in this case but that's it's just that as an h3 uh, the icon you can choose a uh, chevron and we'll, we're going to use the down pointing chevrons because we're going to rotate rotate it later so that's set up like that the size is at 24 pixels for now and the color like that as well okay now this div is where the faq content will be loaded into and we're using a rich text element to load that and it should be inside a div like this. So here you can see I've added padding, right? Now when I was do when I was building this, what I would do is just go shift F and then type in padding. And that's how I just did it, but find it, it go you have to go into the wrapper. Okay, so that is the basic setup. There's one very important thing that you need to do to make this all functional, and that is adding. Uh, class. So with this div selected, I can type CLA and I get to the classes. I can input a class directly, but here you can see it says AI, almost inevitable, not artificial intelligence, uh, AI toggle underscore title. Now the reason Siri just got activated again. I don't know why. Stop. No, nope, stop. Okay. Toggle underscore title. Um, I use underscore to separate the words. Um, if you want to try something else or if you change the classes, you're going to have to edit the JavaScript as well. But as long as you understand this div is the clickable div and that will house both the heading and the chevron. Okay. So call it what you want, but that's what it is here. AI hyphen toggle underscore title. Uh, same here with this div. CLA and you'll see AI toggle underscore content. Hey, I was just editing this and I realized that I didn't mention this. So I'm just going to say it quickly right now. Uh, the icon, because we need that to rotate, uh, actually also has AI toggle underscore Chevron. Okay. So three classes total that you need to add extra because we need to get them to do special stuff. Uh, here is a toggle title, as you can see, toggle title that is toggle content yep and the icon is toggle chevron okay cool there's no padding on this div and padding on the text div now if you have because we're using max height if you have padding there it it, it throws things out of whack so that's why the padding is in the rich text okay uh that should be it and we're not gonna because it's all set up i mean i don't need to actually do much to it and we're pretty much done. So we're gonna go to uh, the FAQ page and we're gonna start making that page. And that should be pretty easy. Now, you've already seen that the content is already here. So we're gonna go into Breakdance and build it out, right? And because it's already been built out, I'll show you how I did it and then you can make the uh, necessary adjustments to it later. So let's load this stuff up. And in this section, you'll see I have the repeater field. Now the global block is the FAQ toggle that we just built. And underneath that, you'll see the field is taking the content from that ACF repeater field. So this is what you're seeing, and that's great. 
it should be doing that. If you want to style uh, the fields, I'll get to that later at the end, just a little bit. Uh, not the fields. If you want to style the toggles, even when it's open, I'll get to that in the end. Okay, now, once you have this set up, this repeater field should have AI accordion, AI hyphen accordion. Now, that is the overarching class. That's a starting point for the classes, and everything underneath it will, will sort of work underneath, uh, will work as a child element. Uh, now, one thing that I've noticed is if you have a gap in between uh, the fields like this, it will filter through and it will inherit the gap and you'll actually get an extra gap right under uh, the global block. So what I did was I added BDE dynamic repeater item. Now you can find that here right under the repeater field uh, element. You'll see BDE dynamic repeater item. Okay. Now you add that next to selector as a class. So there's a, there's a, there's a period in there. Okay. And then you put in gap equals zero, gap zero. Okay. And that should take out all the uh, unnecessary uh, gaps. And that means that you can also style everything the way that you want. And it'll take just this element. And the one that causes extra gaps here will go away. Okay. That's pretty much it. Now that you're all set up, um, I took out the padding. I take out the paddings of most of the items. I usually rely on the space between items as my main uh, spacing uh, element, element, spacing um, property. And that's why I take out the padding, but it's all up to you. Okay, so now here in the code block, I've added all this kind of stuff, all right? So here is the JavaScript for that accordion, and here is the CSS that I'm adding. Now you can see toggle title, it's best if it looks clickable to people. So even though it is not a link, it will have that little pointer, as you can see. So that definitely helps. And just to get a little bit of smooth transitions, um, as you can see, that rotates smoothly and that opens and closes smoothly. So I added that in there, okay? So there's no extra CSS because that extra CSS that opens and closes and turns the chevron is inside the JavaScript here. So you'll see right now is it set at max height zero, which means there is no height to it and everything that overflows will be hidden so you can't see it. And then um, the chevron is rotated at zero degrees and then it will rotate into 180 as you can see here, when it's clicked on. So when it's clicked, it does a couple things, right? And then it adds and takes out toggle open as a class, just so it's easy to style things later if you need it, okay? Because if you have an extra class, you can add that toggle open to this. And you can change the background color or you can uh, do whatever you want. Uh, and if you want to also um, affect the content underneath that, you can also do something like this. And then style that, and that will actually affect the content when it's open. Okay? All right. So. In here, you can see that the copy paste double JavaScript that you get from the link down below, that goes inside a script tag and the CSS goes inside a style tag. Okay, cool. Once that's saved, you are done. So now you can see, and so if I click on that, you'll be able to see that um, toggle open appears in this div here, okay? so. See that? It says toggle open now, right? And these guys don't have it. Oops. Sorry. So these guys don't have it. But if I click on these guys, now this one has it and this one does not. Okay, so that's how um, you can style things separately if you want, whether it's open or not. And there you have it. All good, right? Um, and it should be done, you should be done, but if you wanna learn how to style a little bit more things, 
um, keep watching and I'll show you how to do that right now okay uh, now one thing that I would sort of like to do is get this whole thing all right get this whole thing have a background color okay so that would mean that for example let's give it a background color and we'll do something really light colored like e yeah okay and of course uh, border radius oops border radius I used one rem throughout so that will work now if I close it you won't see it because it just goes away that that area that has the background of the light gray is of this article and there and everything else that comes out that's supposed to come out underneath it is all hidden inside so it doesn't it doesn't show so that's see that works fine so how do we get the border background color and the border radius inside the article well remember we already had BD dynamic repeater item set up in here right just add that in there and that should be it all done so now if we refresh you don't see any background color yet if you click it you'll see that background color there and that works wonderfully okay okay uh, let's try one last thing remember how I talked about having that toggle open thing toggle open so we will add that in there we'll give it uh, probably I don't know we'll, we'll make it red just to see uh, it work ease work better I mean just to see that it's working right so I'll add that h3 in there now uh, space here in the CSS means it's a child element and you can see there's no space here that means it's on the same level okay uh, color color uh, red all right let's add that to the code block um, right down here all right so now that happens wonderfully right okay hope that helps and hope you have fun with your accordions and I'll see you in another video bye